Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming your way every Saturday. And happy Halloween. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, happy right. happy spooky season, spooky I should season, say. Yeah. Halloween's like goes for like 90 days, in my opinion, right? You yeah, know? because we're definitely in the uh, vortex, yes. the Halloween vortex. We're in season's greetings to some of you out there. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is why it's we celebrate for a, a month because like Halloween is over and then it's fucking November. I, yeah. Like and it's, then it's, the shift is quick. But it's Christmas. It's yeah. Halloween and then it's Christmas. Like as in modern society, yeah. we'd skip. O- Fall is really only 30 days long in American society. It sucks. Well, Halloween is the uh, and all of those the, days are in October. Yeah, the day or the day that uh, that separates uh, summer mm-hmm. from winter, mm-hmm. right? Is according to this movie that oh, we watched. fall from winter. It's when the 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 barrier is the barrier, the yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the souls one of, of the, the dead. Yeah, see, we're this, one close. of the yeah, we're, one of the right, reasons right. I love this movie. But. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. All right, well. Um, as always, we hope that if this is your first rodeo, you'll go over to whatever uh, fantastic service you found us on and hit that like or subscribe button. Um, but these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. Holly is on assignment. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight for Spooky Season? For Spooky Season, we watched 2007's Trick or Treat. And now this is a different movie. This is a different movie week. than we watched last week. I picked it last week. <laughs> Little, I didn't know uh, what hell it would play on the mailbag because everybody writing poor in. Igor. I love Trick or Treat. <laughs> what? Poor Igor. Yeah, poor this Igor. confused him so much. This is, but I mean, it's his favorite time. Maybe this is he loves this. Like he's he's just in the mailroom. Yes, oh, yeah, but yeah, he yeah. has he's he's well. You haven't seen it. it's always sunny. I was gonna say he's Charlie in the mailroom trying to red string the shit out of this uh, yeah. because he's trying to sort <laughs> trick or treat and trick or treat mm-hmm. back to back. Yeah, that was one of the. I think when this movie came out, um, didn't they? They had considered other titles. Yes, they had, and they were avoiding trick or treat because there was a movie called Trick or Treat. Yes, <laughs> this movie so deserves decided. the title more. Yeah, I think yes, so. I yeah. would say so. Yeah, the more I see everything else trick or treat, the more I realize like that is. Barely worth that title. Yeah. Like, why call it? Just, just for the... Just saying the, the 1986 yes, one. Yes, the 1986 one, one yeah. Trick or Treat. Because they yeah. had a title and said, come up with a movie for the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There we go. All right. Well, this one is directed by... Michael Doherty. Who we would know from... He has written... He's written some things for Brian Singer. He who shall not be named, but we mm-hmm. named um, He wrote... I think his first one was uh, X2, X-Men United. Oh, uh, he wrote one, Superman. one of my favorite movies, like, I ever. Did, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, he also wrote Superman Returns, so mm, yeah. we'll get to the other spectrum of that. Um, he has uh, written a few other things. He's directed, I mean, he directed this. He directed Krampus. He directed one of the Godzilla movies. Yeah, he directed one. King of the, the Monsters? Other? Yes. Yes, and he wrote, the story was by, for uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. He yep. did that as well. And I don't know if he's coming back for the new one. Isn't there Godzilla Kong 2? Or is yeah, no, that's Adam what's Wingard? his name. Yeah, Wingard's yeah. doing oh, that. Oh, so. ew. It, uh, you well, know Wingard what? did Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it doesn't, thank God, it doesn't matter because yeah. he doesn't come through in right. that movie. So it yes. doesn't, like Michael Doherty doesn't come through in whatever Godzilla movie. No, does, I, I, this is. I've seen all those Godzilla movies yeah. and this is the first I'm hearing of Michael Doherty being involved <laughs> right? at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. You wouldn't even know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I mean, that's the thing. I guess you could do those big budget movies. It's like anybody can make them. Right. Uh, and, and yet I, think, I still see Adam Wingard and I'm like, no, no, yeah, right, no. Yeah, yeah. Even, yeah. even though Trevorrow, I know it'll be fine. Yeah. Yes. I'm looking at you, Colin Trevorrow. <laughs> yep. My, my mm-hmm. forever uh, uh, Josh problem Trank. I with you. Trank. Yeah. Anyway, Trank It sucks to be quickly. like a, uh, an indie filmmaker yeah. now because you're hoping <laughs> that, I mean, because the Godzilla movie. I don't want to do big movies. Yeah. It's the, well, that's the big payday. But yeah. I mean, your career is forever ruined. The mo- It's like a deal with the devil. As soon as you do that like you're never going to do anything Ryan else. Johnson yeah, maybe the I biggest mean, offender now, of all in that okay well he's but, he but he's on his comeback tour too. yeah he's like I'm I'm paying my penitence for even though I think he's very proud of oh what he's he, very proud he's yeah. doing the Star Wars mm-hmm. franchise yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. more recently like a month ago he said no I'm still good with it I like yeah, it yeah, yeah. well good for him yeah <laughs> Um. Okay. So, uh, Paid trick or treat. Um, trick or treat. Two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine. Seven. It was made in two thousand and seven, and for some reason, Warner Brothers shelved it. Because I, I remember. Okay, and a Where lot of you trailer? probably do. Right. I think this is how it went. If I remember correctly, mm-hmm. 
Blu-ray was still a relatively new format. You remember the format wars that were yes. HD, DVD, and Blu-ray. But Which, like, obviously Blu-ray was going to win because HD, DVD is just a terrible name, right? It's like, a lot to get out, yeah. HD, DVD sounds like it's high-definition DVD. I get it. What's a Blu-ray? Right now, now we know. Right but now. Yeah, but what's time, a Betamax? I don't know. That doesn't mean anything right, either, yeah. you know? True. Um, so there was this movie from Warner Brothers called 300 and on Blu-ray I think it was one of the biggest selling like that was the one that got people to buy Blu-ray players or buy it was the first thing they bought when they got a Blu-ray player makes sense on the front of that fucking disc was a trailer for an upcoming movie called Trick or Treat and so everyone saw this trailer and then the movie 2007 never materialized and we were like what the hell (laughs) Every now and then, there's a movie that floats on my radar. I'm just like, oh, I, I, that looks great. I have to see that uh, when it's not around, like uh, when Brick came out back mm-hmm. in the day. That was nowhere near any theater near me. It was just in festivals mm-hmm. all the time. Same thing with this one. Saw that trailer on 300. It was like, awesome. New Halloween movie. And then it just sat and did nothing for two years. It went to festivals. And yeah. you kept hearing about... Uh, like all the um, so and so would see it at Butt Namathon or right. whatever, so and, yeah, like, and they'd be like, "It's fantastic! It. Why is this not yeah. out?" It's it's so maddening to be a a civilian moviegoer and hear festival buzz for months yeah. and to never be able to see the movie. It's like that Eric Andre meme where he's like, "Let me in outside <laughs> the me, gate." Like that's us. Awesome. Yeah. Like stop fucking talking about it. Just let us see it. Like no, it yeah. depend because I mean now there's film festivals all over the place, but yeah. at the time it seemed like they were in, you know. The bigger metropolises, right? Mm-hmm. And not all of them are cool enough to have like their, you know, whatever right. horror movie. Now that it seems like they do the horror festivals and uh, oh yeah, twenty four hour marathons and yep. all this mm-hmm. other stuff. But back then it felt distant. Yeah, because you remember, I mean, you don't really hear that so much anymore. That like movies premiere at you know like a festival so much. Well, premiered sick. Uh, you just know, premiered. Like, I just heard about that. Which premiered one? It was sick. like. Have you not heard of Sick? Yeah. Kevin Williams? Yeah, we talked about this off movie? mic. It's the Kevin Williams and COVID slash. Uh, yeah. okay, okay. Everyone says it's pretty darn good, and mm-hmm. I'm hearing it just premiered at the Toronto International. I was going to say, right. Toronto gets a lot. Didn't Halloween 2018 premiere at Toronto? Probably. Like, they, they, yeah. But that like, kind of stuff, where like mm-hmm. these movies that you were hold, you know, waiting, waiting to see, like, because I think House of a Thousand Corpses was another one that, I don't think that went to film festivals, but that was pirated, because it was oh, yeah. made like two years before it came out. And I think there was like pirate copies or something. So maybe it didn't go to festivals. But anyway, the uh, so the anticipation was there. Yep. Uh, the movie never came out. We got and then eventually Blue they dumped it mm-hmm. to uh, Blu-ray under the Warner Premier uh, label. Does that still exist? I'm going to say no. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like Paramount Vintage or whatever that. Yeah. One. yeah, yeah. And they just all shuttered them and just like. Whoosh. Well, this movie's had like a uh, interesting life since then. Because it seems like everyone that you talk to has seen it. Yep. And everyone seems to know Sam, mm-hmm. the main character on the front of the poster. He's here. an icon of Halloween now. He yeah. is. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. For as long as this was, people were just like, nah, we're not going to release that. And then it comes out. And even years later, I see Sam everywhere. Well, it, I feel like it was a cult thing for a while. And now I feel like it's just a mainstream thing. Like, it's just a mainstream thing. People love this movie. And like, it's more... If you haven't seen it, it's kind of like an oddity, right? It kind of feels that way. Because I, Spirit Halloween has a whole costume section for it. I was just going like, yeah. yeah. just took the kid yeah. to Spirit, and they got a whole thing yeah. of just Sam's and trick-or-treat mm-hmm. stuff everywhere. Because so. people are finding it eventually went to television, you know, cable, and all this other stuff, and then it would play. Somebody ran it for 24 hours. I think it was Chiller. I think it was, Fear I think it was Chiller. Was it Fear Net? I don't know. Wikipedia said it was Fear Net. Okay, but Everybody thinks that. it was Chiller, yeah. Because <laughs> they, they try to do, like, the Christmas story thing, yeah. right? Yeah. The TNT runs that at 24 hours, mm-hmm. or they did. I mm-hmm. think it's down to 12 now, but oh, it used it? to be, like, oh, I, maybe. Could like be we're losing money, and we need yeah. to just cut this back a little bit. Yeah, so they try to, it's like, this is the new Halloween classic, and it did kind of feel like, you know, it was the most... Um, you know, like it was the new Halloween classic after Halloween, right? Yeah, I mean, like Halloween like we had thirty there. years, right? <laughs> yeah. And now it's trick or treat. You yeah, know, it's, it, the, it's weird that they kind of not knocked it off, but kind of slid in there. It's just like Halloween means it used to just mean well, we watch Halloween now. Yeah. We watch Trick or Treat. Have you guys seen those like little comics or like illustrations of like Michael Myers taking Sam trick or treating? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, see, I love people when they put have them all even like acknowledged like the passing of the torch that way. Yeah, sure. And mm-hmm. even like we watched the um, the animated short film that Michael Doherty did 
called Season's Greetings, which mm-hmm. was the inspiration for this movie, the Sam characters in it. Even the character that follows Sam into the alley and everything kind of looks like Michael Myers. Yeah. It's kinda, yeah that's yeah. kind of yeah. the feeling that's I get. That's what they're yeah. trying to do, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he literally kills him and then drags him away. I love this little short. It makes me so <laughs> nostalgic because the illustration style is like very of 1996 it when it is. was done. It feels like old Nickelodeon. Oh. I felt like I was watching Snick again. Yes, like colored pencil illustration that's a little jittery and rough yep. around the edges, but it's so uh, well, it's when's so the last good. time you saw like hand animation? Oh, I mean, geez. everything was yeah. CG, you know, mm-hmm. but old disney style i mean it's like a you know like a, a, a charlie brown yeah great pumpkin yeah mm-hmm. you know that was that was one of his inspirations so, this as well well you're saying this so for the folks who don't know so season's greetings was an animated short it's only like two minutes long or mm-hmm. something yeah, like that sure. that michael doherty made on his own mm-hmm. i think he may have done it for a thesis but i'm not entirely positive. okay and uh, based on that, he was, you know, it's one of those things that he did. And it's about this little trick or treater who ends up turning the tables on uh, this attacker. Because mm-hmm. you think like the kid's in danger, but no, it turns out the attacker actually gets his. And it's a little, uh, it's a kid in pajamas with a sack, sack over his head. Mm-hmm. And he's got a big bulbous head. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that, and so that was 96, I think that yes. it mm-hmm. said. And so since then, uh, Michael Doherty, I guess, would use that on like, you know, He'd send out Halloween cards or something around Halloween, and he'd use this little thing that he created mm. and eventually developed a mythology for Sam. Sam's never named in the movie. I think he's in the credits as Sam. As Sam mm-hmm. in the in the But credits. not in the movie, yes. And we're told, of course, if you know this, that it's short for Sam Hain, which mm-hmm. is apparently pronounced Samhain. Mm-hmm. Samhain, yes. Uh, that's the correct pronunciation. But that's why mm-hmm. his name is no Sam. No one told Donald Pleasance. No that. one told Donald Pleasance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the night of Sam Hain. Mm-hmm. I, I like Sam because I think it's because of that, because Donald Pleasant said it. I'm yeah. like, I like Sam Hain better. Yeah, yeah. Sam Hain but sounds better. Yeah. But Samhain, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, Sam Hain. Um Okay, so what we have is an anthology movie, and they haven't been doing those forever. Right? And what makes, I mean, <laughs> do they ever do that? Um, um, what was I going to say? Do they ever do anthologies that are not sort of horror or science fiction? I don't know. Now Quizzical that you say that, faces. give me some like, yeah, give me some like teen drama sh- yeah, anthology. Well, I watched the shit out sure. of that. Well, to me, I guess the progression of it, right, was like you had, you know, well, I mean, obviously you've got like, you know, 50s horror anthologies and stuff like mm-hmm. that, TV horror anthologies. And then there's Creep Show. Okay. Yeah. In horror. Right. It's like, you know, you have to, and this movie, I think, owes a debt to, a large debt to Creep Show. There's comic book, uh, you know, covers and Mm -hmm. transitions and stuff like that, even though you're like, why? Mm -hmm. It seems like it's because there's Creep Show. That's how we're going to get into this. Because you forget about it for a while, and then it shows up back at the end, and you're just Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, that was part of this movie. But I think uh, Pulp Fiction, uh, because that's an anthology movie that doesn't feel like an anthology movie, because the characters interact with each other, and it's told out of sequence, and, like, you'll be watching a story where characters from another episode will interact with the characters in this new episode. Mm-hmm. And then there was a movie called Go, and that's maybe the mm-hmm. one that, you know, is not a... Is that an anthology? That's an anthology. Yeah. It's three different stories, that. but they all interlink, and yep. it's told out of order, but it is three separate stories. 1116. There's a movie called 1116. 44 Minutes to Midnight is an anthology based on uh, a single event that happens. And I, I think it's violence. That makes hmm. an anthology easier to do because for any other genre, I think you maybe you have to play out the emotions more mm-hmm. and you can come to a quick ending in horror real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Which can keep them short. I think that's got something. To well, do is with love it. actually an anthology? I have Christmas seen it. anthology. Oh, okay. You know, it, I think it McKayla? probably is. Yeah, I would say it is, and right. I would say probably like those Valentine's Day, yep. New Year's Eve movies are probably anthologies. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so then okay. that leaves the great Halloween anthology that we're all missing, which is All Hallows Eve, which is that like a yeah. teenager one that it's like PG. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. So we got an anthology. We did. <laughs> but it's going to be separate stories. Was there five? Is there four? How many are there in this? And they intertwine with each other and we see they happen on sequence. Four. four, I think. I think it was four. Okay. We got, well, we can go through it when we talk about the stars of this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan Baker is in this movie, who you would know from many things. I, I mean, like most Spider-Man things, yeah. comes to mind because yeah. yeah, he played yeah. Dr. Connors. Connors the yeah. lizard. In, well, I didn't think he turned into the lizard. He right? never got to be the Not lizard, in no. the Sam Raimi ones. No. He never uh, but got Dylan it. Baker 
has been admitted oh, to the Saturday Night Freak Show sir. Wall of Fame. Uh, we are notified by the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, MF Mad, that Thank Dylan you. Baker was in Woody Allen's Celebrity, which, oh, yes, boy. we covered Jesus. on this show way back in the day. <laughs> A different time. And he was also in The Cell. Oh, okay. And Forgot Trick or Treat. That. So yeah. there you go. We inducted one other uh, cast member of Trick Brian or Treat. Cox? No. What? <laughs> I don't think so, okay. but uh, see Ernest Hearth to the hallway of okay. home because he was the uncredited doorman in Valentine. You might have recognized him. Gotcha. Or he was the great child ghost in 13 Ghosts, and he was also oh. the giant baby oh. in Turkey. There it is. The baby, huh? There it is. The yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Dylan Baker's in the movie. Dylan Baker. Well, should we talk about who's the cast in their stories? Okay. That way we sure. can break the stories start up. start linearly. Go, go okay. with the movie. Okay, yeah. so, okay. so do we have a wraparound? Because that's usually a thing, that, like like a classic anthology. Well, some of them, the old ones, like Dead and Night, I don't even think has a wraparound. It's just yeah. like, here's four stories. Mm-hmm. Twilight Zone is like, it has kind of that wraparound with oh my God. Dan Aykroyd. Did, I watched the Twilight Zone movie recently. I do not see Does it. Does not hold up. Oh, no. no. Oh, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Like, I it's, watched it as a kid and had fond memories of it, and I wish I would have left it. What about there. John Lithgow? Yeah, I still that's, like but that's that one. the best one. Yeah. It's the it? last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have to sit through all this shit. Eh, but that. this is also the rule of anthologies that you have to have. You have to hold your best story for the end. So I thought we determined second to last when we talked about this before. Well, we yeah, were talking. Yeah. We did. We we we, when we, we did talked about show. this on Creep Show. Yeah, What's okay. the best order? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The anthology yeah. rules. Yeah. What if they turn Scream into an anthology? Give it time. Well, you put it out there, and now it's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. Right. I'm surprised the TV show didn't do that. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it seems like an obvious choice for the TV show. I mean, yeah. it kind of isn't. Well, eh, no, no. Yeah, because I guess the beginning of this movie, it turns out, is also the end of the movie, we find out, yep. um, where Leslie Bib- Bibb and Tamaho Pinklet from Battlestar Galactica oh, uh, 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 are a couple returning home after a Halloween party, and she She's it. miserable. Oh, my She's God. miserable. You know what? This is not the person for me. That's what this guy should be saying, you know, because yeah. like he clearly loves Halloween and she can't even stand it. Like that wants to put all the decorations away like right now. And we were trying to figure out like what time of night is this? It's got to be late. It's got to be late. It can't be. But it can't be because they say when we go to the parade that it's eight o'clock and it, and like the well, parade or not the parade, the no, because party downtown. I should that say. clip happens during brian cox's segment okay so it is actually like nine o'clock then or sometime after yeah. eight when this actually happens okay but we cut back they're still time. turning in early yeah 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 but they are they said they've been drinking they're lit um yeah they're gonna turn in early they're gonna get the tape mm-hmm. have a nice sexy night and go mm-hmm. to bed but she commits a cardinal sin of the holiday <sighs> this is rules. what the whole movie's about it is right? it's about the spirit of halloween and the rules of halloween mm-hmm. and kind of what it's all about and one of them she blows out the candle in the jack lantern before Halloween's over. Yeah, which you can't do. Can't and so do. they're the movie, there to protect you, Colin. The over over uh, arcing thing is that there is the spirit of Halloween is actually Sam. Yes, right. He's the wraparound. He's yeah. He's the character who who goes through all the stories. Mm-hmm. So right? when I was a kid, my dad actually used to tell me the opposite. He used to tell me, you better make sure you blow out that candle before you go to bed. Cause if you don't, he used to tell me it's like a beacon for evil spirits. And oh, if you, see, if they see that there, that's like a, like, Hey, this door's wide open. Burglar invite yourself in is like basically what they see. That's well, what the mythology so is, I was raised with. This is why every year Michaela is just smashing. Pumpkins. I was like, as dude, soon as I was she like sees them. this is the kind of stuff my parents told me as a kid. And it's a w- shock that I have anxiety to them. It's Jeez. like, yeah, you raised me believe all this crazy shit i'm trying to remember like, <laughs> the original origin of the jack-o'-lantern because it's it's to tricks uh ghosts right like because ghosts come out on the the, the night when the, the separation between yeah. the mm-hmm. living and the dead is the thinnest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and somehow they see the whatever the skull mm-hmm. and think that that's and they go there instead of like i don't know yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't remember yeah. this actually uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, My dad was basically like, "It's blood in the water. You better yeah. put it out." You know, like it's warding off the, the <laughs> ghost somehow. So Sam is going around and basically, but even this isn't consistent. Uh, making sure that the rules are being followed, mm-hmm. and so there's several stories that we follow. Mm-hmm. Um, Leslie Bibb ends up dead, uh, hacked to death in her own front yard, yep. and hung up like her <laughs> like the decoration she hates so much. Yep, yep. hacked to death with a a, a sucker knife. As yeah. it were, Sam has got a little sharp sucker that's broken, and he 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Slashes her up with it. Now, Sam is actually played by a kid. Yeah, right? yeah Quinn, Quinn Lord. Lord. Yeah, he was at the convention I worked over the summer. Is that all yeah. he's uh, been known for? I think so. I think so. I mean, he didn't have much of a line, so it didn't seem to be much demand. But I, I, yeah. I get it, though. You're a... Uh, you were a kid, and you were wearing two layers of costume. It's yeah. not like your face was on screen, you know? <laughs> well, he is in the movie. He's the kid who's looking under the stalls at the girls. Gotcha. Oh, is that him? Yeah, it's him. Oh, really? So he is young as hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, young. he was a legit child. He's like eight. Okay, uh, when I saw him at the convention, demon. he didn't look older than, like, 22 years <laughs> yeah, old. He's okay. really young. Yeah, he's, yeah, he was young for this. Uh, well, I mean, I guess that's the thing that kind of adds a little bit of creepiness to Sam is that, you know, he looks like a trick-or-treater mm-hmm. when he comes to people's doors. Um, His height he, makes him creepier. The fact yeah. that he's so short. And that big head. Mm-hmm. And the sounds he makes are child sounds. I yep. mean, it's like, it really sounds like a little kid. You kid know? giggles and stuff. It's yeah. really yeah. unsettling. Yeah. As he's hacking people to death and yep. stuff like that. He does have a Charlie Brown shape. The big, like, round dome head. Yeah. He does. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if they ripped off and it was Charlie Brown. And like, that might be scary. With the little button hey, eyes. On Char- the- Charlie Brown's an asshole. Charlie Brown's <laughs> an According asshole. According to this movie. According to this movie, Charlie Brown's an asshole. Which is funny. That line really got me this time around. I forgot about Charlie that. Charlie Brown's an asshole. I was screaming it to the neighborhood. Charlie Brown's an asshole. And I was like, I just want to know. I want to know his reasoning. Like, I want to know why. Like, wait, let's yeah. talk about this. Why do you think Charlie Brown? I mean, okay, maybe everyone in Peanuts is kind of an asshole, right? Uh, yeah. Lucy's the biggest one, yeah, obviously. Lucy's, yeah. But like, everyone's kind of an asshole. Although, Linus is an asshole too. Like, I don't think we can trust this kid's judgment. <laughs> he seems is, a bit warped. And who is this kid we're talking about? This is uh, Dylan Baker's child. Um. Uh, who has come home from trick-or-treating in the midst of his father burying bodies. Yeah, because I guess that's the other, there's like a sin, has ha- a Halloween sin we watch happen, and that's yes. this kid uh, trick-or-treating, and he's knocking all the pumpkins off the uh oh. Off those Not just fences. any kid. The kid this, from okay, Bad Santa. I was going to say Thurman Merman from fucking Bad Thurman. Santa. This kid, I can't look at this kid without dry heaving a little bit because, yeah, don't, because everything I've seen him in, he's vomiting on somebody. Mm. I can't, and it's always all over his face <laughs> and cast. all over his shirt. Oh, wow. Yeah. I look at this kid and I get the sweat like I'm going to puke because oh, wow. I, it's. Because you've seen him puke so many in times. In Bad Santa, it's yeah. almost the exact same scene. Yeah. And then Billy Bob Thornton wears those clothes for the whole movie. It's disgusting. <laughs> and I can't handle puke shit in movies it's so gross yeah, i just no, and, and this scene is so well, why is why is this guy puking why is this kid puking he didn't check his candy that he got from the principal yeah which is dylan baker mm-hmm. right so he's caught basically stealing candy and dylan baker's like ah, 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 like you know and sits there with him and but tells him a little story about the rules of halloween mm-hmm. yeah but it turns out dylan baker is apparently a serial killer and yes. has killed this kid by poisoning his halloween so we get a uh, chocolate vomit for Ugh, uh, so long <laughs> so gross. felt myself gag a little bit yeah they made the, it ugh. sound gross too yeah. Ugh. yeah and there was pauses between it so you thought it was over and then no it, and then he's there we go again gurgling and making guttural noises yeah, yeah it's sick these stories aren't named, I don't think. Have they ever been named no. anywhere? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't know what this one's called, but mm-hmm. this one is basically, yeah, you're watching the killer in the aftermath of the murder, mm-hmm. and you're like, is he going to get caught? Because uh, trick-or-treaters come to the door, you know, and then uh, he takes the body out back where he has a hole dug, and then the neighbor's dog is uh, going to, you know, making noise and going to uh, make him be discovered. His kid's yelling at him. Charlie Brown's an asshole. Yeah. yeah. And we're and it turns out that Brian Cox is the uh the next door neighbor and mm-hmm. there's something going on because we see Sam attack him through a window, but yeah. we don't know what the hell's what's happening. Those are nice little scenes like that. And there mm-hmm. is the 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 bleed over between stories and everything. Right. Because it makes the movie, I guess, um uh it rewards on a second watch. Yeah. Because Absolutely. like you see you notice like, that- oh! Oh, there's Rhonda. a lot of Leo DiCaprio pointing in this movie. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that. Especially going. like the dialogue between Anna Paquin and all the other women. Yes. A lot which of is what I was watching this it. whole time. Yeah. I'm just like, this is good. Yeah. Because they're all talking about, well, this is. The innuendo this, is great. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, right don't, let's not oh, okay. Yeah, we got to figure it out. Otherwise, we're going to be all, <laughs> But in that opening scene, I think where you're going down the street, mm-hmm. um, you do see uh, Rhonda's, uh, you know, she's pulling the little wagon, mm-hmm. yep. the girls, you know, are going the, to the, the party, kids, come the kids by. from the bus are, you can slowly see Yeah, they're all by. there, I think, yep. in that establishing scene. These are all the characters that you're going to interact with mm-hmm. for the rest of the movie. You just don't realize it until you've seen it a second time. Yes. Um, so Dylan Baker takes the body out back and is burying it, but he's got other bodies back there. Oh, yeah. And I guess the 
the suspense is like, is he going to kill his own son? Yeah. Yes. Because it seems like his son irritates him. His son just wants to carve a jack o' lantern. It seems like he's like a centimeter away from like falling down type breakdown, yeah, right? Like, like he's if, close. Yeah, like, like he's not gonna make it till next Halloween. No, no, because everybody's pressing him. The dog, neighbor's dogs barking. The neighbor's dogs come out, and he's just trying to get this done. Look, I just like, want to bury a body. Yeah, That's it. And he keeps getting interrupted, and he's. It's like that sitcom dad rage, you know, when they're just so close to completing their goal, but they can't quite get there. And yeah. the line I think that tries to sell it is when he's like, "Daddy, I want to, you know, carve a pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Daddy, I wish mom was still here." Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, this guy resents his kid. Right. Right. And here it goes and it builds up like, you know, he's like, yeah, OK, let's go down to the basement. He has the knife behind his back. And uh, what happens in the basement? Because it's shocking. It's, it's not what you expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kid who was murdered earlier. Thurman his, Merman. Thurman Merman. His decapitated head is laying on a, like a little lazy Susan. Yeah. And what you call it. And he uh, Dylan Baker has to help his son with the eyes. So, because his son wants to, is they're gonna. This is Carve what they Jack do. Lantern. Yeah, they're He's, carving the head of mm-hmm. this yeah. young child, mm-hmm. which there is a go. good twist at it's the end. Fucking, okay, this movie's <laughs> dark as fuck. Like, I never really paid attention to how dark this movie is because it's so fun to watch. It is, but if you actually think about any of these stories a little bit beyond what's being presented, it's like that's like like we Sean we talked about. This was my first time noticing that when they come down the basement stairs, there's a wall of Halloween masks mm-hmm. that are clearly like trophies from previous. Victims I'm, from I'm, previous yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Right. I'm wondering if they're trophies or if he's got a cadre of masks he wears out to kill people. I think they're trophies. Probably I think trophies. They're tro- yeah. I didn't I thought they were, you know, because yeah. I think your insight tonight was like, yeah. Oh yeah, that's absolutely right? what it is. Yeah. Is he's been killing these kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Motive one every know. year on Halloween, trophies. you know. Well, more than one because yeah. he had two bodies in the right. in the uh the grave in the in the backyard. And yeah. he knew this he knew Thurman Merman because he's a principal and this kid was at his school, it sounded like, because he was like, Oh, what about it's not good for your diabetes like he knew stuff about this yeah, kid yeah. so i'm just yeah, like is he <laughs> picking off the shithead kids from his school every halloween basically it seems like it should be a bigger story in yeah its movie in itself yeah and then i was wondering about like the candy that he was handing out and like is it poison and then there was a point later on in a later story that maybe you'll have to remind me about because mm-hmm. i was wondering i was like is that the poison candy i know what moment you're talking about and i believe it is because mm-hmm. it is spit out yes mm-hmm. okay i believe so okay yeah, that's what, uh, he's like. He's like, I know what arsenic tastes like. <laughs> that's not good. Um, so, I mean, the, basically, that's the story. That's, that's story number one. Yep. Right. So mm-hmm. who's who's the stars of story number two? Story number two. Well, what is story number two? Is it the girls? It, it was, it's the girls, right? Because we go downtown to this Halloween party. Right. Which yeah. like this whole town is shut down and everyone is partying in like the town square for Halloween and Wow, I want to live in a place like this. There are places. This looks so much fun. Salem does it, and I think it may be the, uh, they're in Ohio, I think, or Mm -hmm. something like that, which is one of the, there's some town there that does it big every year, and I think this was their parade that they went to and shot at and all that I love it. I I want, yeah, I want to live in this atmosphere. This has some of the best Halloween atmosphere I've ever seen in a movie, right? Like. I think that is the biggest appeal of this movie, to be honest with you. It has so much iconography associated with the holiday Mm -hmm. yes it has i mean like you know just out of the blue like you know we need scarecrows well they got they figured out a way to do it right as they're walking past the field Mm -hmm. with pumpkins and they got scarecrows uh pumpkin lit ways in the in the forests Mm -hmm. oh Um, yeah oh yeah there's the halloween we see halloween parties going on inside of houses there's town halloween parties you got vampires werewolves uh you know i mean it's just it's an explosion of production design. It is. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to, I want, you're right. I yeah. want to live in that version of Halloween. Right. Just seems so kind of perfect. Because it's like, it. it's for once it's a Halloween movie where the atmosphere is really good, but it's an adult movie where adult things happening and it's adult content. Like, I feel like kids movies get the atmosphere a lot, you know? Focus, yeah, it's because of the bright Focus, Focus, Halloween it's Town. The bright colors and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, this is a movie an R-rated movie where adult shit, there's a fucking orgy key party happening in one of these houses that we see <laughs> yeah, a glimpse a, of, yeah. you know, like, but it's, it's got all the Halloween atmosphere and iconography and, and just like, like the orange lighting on everything is amazing. Yeah. Jack-o'-lanterns in every corner, whether it makes sense yeah. or not, you yeah. know, I wonder if that is really what the appeal, like over everything else. It's just like, it's the movie that feels like Halloween. It, yeah. You know, I think a, so. It's so addressing because, 
it even goes in on this story into the costume shop where the girls are, you know, getting their costumes and they're all Disney princesses, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Yep. Basically. And Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. Like fairy tale princesses, yeah. not just Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's, yeah. sto- it's more like just, storybook. Or yeah. Fairy tale. Okay. Disney took over fairy tales. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, this is a Cinderella design from Disney, right? Yeah. 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 But Little you're Red right. Riding Hood right. is right. Okay. something else. Yeah. And the other one was Sleeping Beauty. I think there was a Sleeping Beauty. There was yeah. Snow White, too. Snow White. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so they, uh, these girls say that like, and this is one of those, this episode, I think when you watch it later, all the dialogue means something different, mm-hmm. but yes. they've, they go to these Halloween parties every year mm-hmm. and they need to find dates. Mm-hmm. Right. And they ended up yep. with sailors when they were just like sailors and, mm-hmm. you know, yep. last year in New York or whatever. Yeah, and they they just, went to they're Tampa. discussing their previous year's conquests. Yeah. Like they were picking up guys. And, and listener, if you have not seen this movie Stop right now. Go watch the movie. Oh, yeah. Come back because we're going to spoil the shit out of like this, especially. And I feel like this is really good if you don't know what's happening. Right. This specific story. Yeah. Yeah. This. So go watch it if you haven't. (laughs) Yeah. If you have any inclination to watch this movie, go now before we talk about it. All right. Well, there you go. That's your warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, -hmm. I guess the, the, so they're trying to find dates, but the, the dynamic is that, uh, Anna Paquin mm-hmm. is in this movie. She's in the movie because uh, Brian Singer, yeah, X mm-hmm. two X Men, right? Yeah, yeah. Michael Doherty. Mm-hmm. So because this was before True Blood, right? Yeah, True Blood yeah. was like two thousand seven or eight, maybe. So this is like, True Blood's like right after this. I think yeah, but yeah. this was released. Yep, after True oh, Blood yeah. had already been, and she had all of a sudden become like a thing again. Um, mm-hmm. so. Or at least that seemed like that was a bigger booster. I know being a part of the ensemble of the X Men, but like yeah. she was the star. I think. Oh right, and True Blood, True Blood was like crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should give that a rewatch. I haven't. I watched it the one time when it I've aired. Seen, and that was it. I've seen it a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like everything else, it just gets sillier and sillier. As oh as yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's what there I was a time I completely quit watching because it got so stupid, and yeah. then I went back anyway. Yeah. So I got sucked back in. But um, did I ever see how that? Well, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So these girls uh, are, are uh, so uh, Anna Paquin is the virgin mm-hmm. is the way that we're to understand this. And so she's been tasked with basically going out into the, um, the party, the street party and finding a guy to bring back. Cause the other mm-hmm. more successful girls are like, bam, we got guys. They're experienced. And, yeah. We're, right. we're going back to the, they have a party happening at like, what was it? Sheep's. Field? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of sheep and a lot of uh, <laughs> um, um, what was the name of the bus? It was like uh, who watches the sheep? Shepherd, shepherd, shepherd. Oh, yeah, so it was, was like it something, was shepherd it something? Was shepherd something. I noticed they were in Warren County, and I'm like, is that a callback to Halloween? That's, That's what I, I guess. Was I think yeah. the other thing about this movie is there's a lot of callbacks a to lot. other yes horror movies, and I mean. Even in like throwaway bits, you know, it's yeah, like cause that even, reminds me of this. Right. Know? Even the when we were talking about they, the kids go to the door and there's a party going on inside and all this stuff. That reminds me of Hocus Pocus. Right. That yeah. yeah, yeah. That. There's a pet cemetery moment. Yeah. There's another there's character. A changeling moment. There's yeah. another character dressed up uh, like he made. He told the makeup effects people, "I want you to make me look like John Carpenter." Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is one hundred percent. Well, I mean, I guess you have to acknowledge that John Carpenter is. Like the godfather of cinematic Halloween. Yep. Whether he likes it or not. You're going to do, you know, so (laughs) yeah. Um, I feel like you could end most sentences about John Carpenter with whether he likes it or not, because he doesn't like much. (laughs) Well, I suppose you should say that's the Brian Cox uh, character. Brian Cox is made up to look like John Carpenter. Which like, okay, (laughs) Brian Cox is like his star has risen higher than it's ever been now with Succession, right? Like he's like a household name now. People love him. And I'm just like... Yeah. Like we've loved Brian Cox. We've for always years. loved him. Yes, a genre of people have always loved him. <laughs> for years. You guys are posers and bandwagoners. We've always loved him. <laughs> also an X2. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see, I forgot about that. But that, I thought, was when he was riding his second career high. And then Succession yeah. is like his third career yeah. high. Um, so back to the girls who oh, yes. are. So. Um, Anna Paquin. It's her first time. She's she, the virgin. Well, she finds herself stalked at the street party by a mysterious guy in a cloak. And yep. we think he's a vampire because mm-hmm. when we're first introduced to him, he is drinking the blood of some poor woman in a back alley. Yep. And uh, 
He's got vampire teeth. So we're like, okay, the vampire. So the vampire is stalking her through. Now, have we, like, do we have an idea that there is actually supernatural shenanigans going on in this movie at this point? Or it's just accepted that, like, okay, this is what we're doing. I, I mean, for me, the first time I saw this, that was so obviously someone else in this movie you know that character really? i was like ah oh, that that jawline was a oh, little okay. recognizable <laughs> okay. uh and the eyes but i thought the girls were vampires i thought that's where it was going that's just what uh, yeah and i was so pleasantly like, surprised when it went the other way say, yeah how did you love i was like <laughs> fist bump in the air like fuck yeah like because i was like oh they're vampires because like it makes sense because like you know vampires seduce their victims so it makes sense that they would like be slutty for halloween and be right. vampires it all like pieces together to make you think vampire and yeah. then when it's not it's a great reveal and yeah. to be true uh, you know i think at this we may have these out of order because i think the school bus story may have happened before this i'm not positive uh, now that i'm thinking about it but uh, um regardless so the uh the vampire stalks her, her dresses little red riding hood mm-hmm. through the woods he kills another girl the well he bites her yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he starts, so we know that this guy's a killer. And yeah, because he, he leaves her. the body out mm-hmm. on the, next to some other passed out people mm-hmm. on the thing, which check, check, check on your friends yes. during Halloween if you right. see bloody people on the ground. Right. There's a lot of this going on here because yeah. there, uh, there's a lot of people seeing blood and you know, it's like, is it fake or is it real? Yep. Um, so he follows her into the woods and then confronts her, mm-hmm. you know, attacks her. With the old, you know, look what big eyes you have. And mm-hmm. they're playing a little bit of Red Red, Red Riding Hood. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we cut away. And then we cut to the party. With a big bonfire party in the woods. And there's a scream. And then a body drops wrapped in a red cloak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it turns out it's actually the dude, the vampire. And you're like, what? But he's still surprise. alive, but like barely. Like his legs yeah. are broken and it's gross. And he's like, panicking a little bit. Yep. But no one else is at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. This is not a weird occurrence to anybody else at this bonfire. And the first time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, okay. Like, I'm not impressed yet, you know? Right. Like, because I'm, like, I'm just like, all right. They're like succubus or vampires or something, right? <laughs> like, I'm just like, all right. It turns out they aren't. What are they? They're werewolves. They're, They're werewolves. a werewolf coven of hot ladies. I love it. Hot lady werewolves. Yes. like Copyright 2022 Saturday Night Freak Show. Did I hear, and maybe you looked this up when you were doing your research, because mm-hmm. I remember reading the interviews at the time with uh, uh, Michael Doherty, mm-hmm. and he said of all the, the the stuff in Trick or Treat, right, that, e- that segment either came from an idea that he had or he liked it so much he was considering spinning it off into a show called Bitches. Oh my god, I would I love remember that. that. Werewolf girls at a sky, at, a, right. at a college. God, that's like catnip for me. I love it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I, I was actually that thinking, like, I would love to see a movie of them, and it's just Jennifer's body, but werewolf mm. girls. Like, that's what I would want. But it could still happen. Yeah. Who knows? Right. I think there's enough there to make a whole movie out of. Like, you show them in Miami or San Diego or whatever they're saying. Show one of the previous years or a different city. I said, send them to Amsterdam. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Do something really cool. Okay, so, but we know the concept and that they yeah. are werewolves. So, what do they come up against? What is the thing? Are they the good? Like we're rooting for them at some point because we're rooting for them in this. I mean, because what do you do? We're inducting another girl into the coven, and she finds out that she's part of the. I mean, that's the obvious way to go. Sure. I don't know if it's yeah, a, I just they would have to do some surprising. No, stuff here's what you do: you, you take the American Pie franchise, right? <laughs> wow, okay. and just apply that filter. So American Pie, American Reunion, American Wedding, like take all the college milestones, and it's just werewolf trips, Mean Girls, yeah, with mean, werewolves, yeah. But it, but they're they're doing uh they're doing like a um um study abroad or they're doing a college a spring break trip Do they somewhere. Meet French werewolves and yeah. they have to fight them. Oh no, that's American werewolf in Paris. No, we don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> well, th- I mean that we could yeah. tie it in and everything. Yeah. It's a yeah. backdoor sequel. But there's uh, there's a lot here. See, yes. you see, there's a lot to mine from here. But not only are they werewolves, they're full blown like like dog soldiers, fully furry wolf, yes. not wolf men or wolf women, wolf like wolves. Like they, yes. they, they have the heads of wolves. They it would peel their saw. skin off like it's clothes. That's and fantastic. I love it. The, the, the rubberiness cool. of yes. it and everything and every taking everything off. And, but yeah. like they, they 
peel their skin off and then it's like a furry limb underneath it. And yeah. I just want to know, like, I want to see how the effects work worked for that. You know, have like, you ever seen a company of wolves? Yeah, I, I really. That was that the movie. first mm-hmm. one that I remember seeing. Like, oh, this is an interesting transformation that the right. wolf would be inside you, and you have to peel the human, you know, and it comes suit out your off. mouth. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. which oh, is kind of what I, I, yeah. I what I thought was going on here. Yeah. you know, it's like it's the idea that they're they're you know at the at that point in the bonfire. And everything's getting rowdy. They're stripping, but they strip their skin it, that's off. That's the thing. Yes. It's like sexy disrobing, but yeah. it's like they're peeling their skin off, and I love it. The like, Sweet Dreams by Marilyn Manson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Originally, I guess on set they had fever. Yeah. But they couldn't clear it, so it became Sweet Dreams, which mm. I think has been used in at least too many. How movies. many other? I mean, because it's a creepy song. Uh-huh. Like that yeah. was a nice creepy song from that the two thousands. Patient Zero of doing a slowed down version of a song for a movie and maybe the trailer. Be, that yeah. is maybe. the one that started it all. Yeah, that was, yeah. I love that song. <laughs> I've overheard it right. at this point, but I just remember, but like that was a creepy fucking uh, take. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they used it in House on Haunted Hill. Also, yep. mm-hmm. in the drive up, man, they did. That. Um, so, did we mention who the cloaked figure is revealed to be? Who is it? Dylan Baker. Because mm-hmm. he says earlier that he's going on a date later. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? And then he bites his date. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. is the aftermath of that date where he tries to get Anna Paquin. Yep. Mm-hmm. So and then he, he is, is eaten. He, eaten by werewolves. He's a piece of shit in a couple of different ways, huh? He is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's going yeah. to end up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, school bus story. Yeah. yeah, I was just it's trying to think if there was anything else about the werewolves and the transformations. It is. It's a, it's it's a cool thing that have... goes throughout the movie. So there's a lot more to it. But it's just in little chunks throughout the rest. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, the <laughs> but school I, I bus like massacre. That werewolves are, are being viewed as like sexy in this movie because I feel True. like it's always vampires always get to be the sexy ones, and werewolves are always considered gross and dirty and dog-like. And it's like I. So when that reveal first happened, I first thought I was like, I felt so vindicated. You know, I was like, yes, thank God it's not vampires for once. You know. <laughs> Sexy werewolves. And they seem to be like in control of it, right? Like it seems like right. they choose like, when yeah, to. Yeah, like they're yeah. Bruce Banners and they're just like, I'm going to hulk yeah. a little bit and then Look. we'll go back to it. And like. I wonder. <laughs> no, the funny thing, the end credits would be um, just stark quiet, them cleaning it up and trying to put their skin back on. Oh, but God. you just hear they're having trouble. I know, because I was wondering. And then yeah. a week out. Where, you know, did people find that skin discarded I think so. the next day? I'll bet. Uh, I was also all in that thinking fire. that when, when Dylan Baker shows up and actually looks around and realizes that all the other men uh, that have been brought here are dead already, then I was like, well, did the did they already wolf out and kill these people? Then they had to put their human skins back on and they're taking them back off again. Or did they kill them and then they're going to eat them? I guess I that's so. what's I think, happening. Yeah. Dead I and think then is happening. They're going to eat the dead. Mm-hmm. Okay. The freshly dead. Mm-hmm. Then there's the school bus massacre. So we start following these other kids around the neighborhood through various stories and up yep. to they're the ones who discover the uh, key party going on where the coach <laughs> yeah. is dressed as a uh, what does he say? A He's hot, a hot dog, dog but Fuck. fucking a pig. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> is what he says. As that the hot kids dog catch this glimpse behind the because uh, it's just happening drunk. right in the middle of the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. Uh, if you notice later, the hot dog gets rolled into the pit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Um, so they're out and and uh, they go to Dylan Baker's house also because I think the kid with the eye patch, the pirate, mm-hmm. is the only one who really realizes that there's like a trail of blood leading yeah. to the mm-hmm. and the blood on his clothes from the the vomit yeah. is actually uh, he may be up to something. But which okay, could, <laughs> which is funny because you could also interpret that as like. That kid's just weird because that's his principal and like you, you're kind of fearful of your principal, right? Because they're an authority figure in your life. Yeah. So it's kind of like it could go either way in that situation. Yeah. Well, they yeah. end up uh, going to. They've been collecting jack-o'-lanterns. Right. Because their their whole thing. Well, we don't, I guess, know right away that they're trying to play a prank. Right. On Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Rhonda is a developmentally disabled uh, girl that's out there that they bring with her, with them on their, th- she's a target of their prank. She's yes. dressed as a witch. So, of course, it's going to have something to do with it. Yeah. And they take her out to a stone quarry and then tell her a story about, so we get flashbacks, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Very orange flashbacks. About a school bus full of disturbed children whose this parents shit is dark as i know fuck yeah. <laughs> parents paid off the bus driver to not have to see them again <laughs> yeah 
So what's the bus driver going to well, drive not them into the quarry? Not, that's not what was said. To relieve them of their burden yes. is how it was phrased, which is such a brutal way of phrasing that yes. like oh my, like it really hit me this time i don't know if it's just because i'm getting older or what but i'm just watching it this time i was like this story if you think about it for two seconds is the darkest shit you've ever seen in a movie yeah, they like paid the bus driver to essentially like you were gonna say i think yeah drive it off or somehow yeah. like jam the pedal down and yeah but j- to drown them yeah, right to, like yes. a horrible well, they're chained into their seats as well Right. And I was like, are they chained into their seats every day? They're bust out to this special school in the middle of nowhere? Or was so. this just I today? So. I think so. Um, You're chained up every time. The bus driver stops and like gives them all candy. And while that's happening, one of them in a Dracula mask, all the kids are masked. He ends up, you know, not knowing how to pilot the bus starts yeah, he wants it, to go home right? and he drives it off the cliff so i was like was would that have happened would the driver have done it i wasn't entirely sure that i'm sure like, he was going to put like a brick on the pedal and send down that's what it felt like i was already yeah. there yeah and what was the whole point of this story but right, he's absolved of re- he's absolved of responsibility kind of because he didn't actually drive it into the mm. Not completely I mean, absolved. It's like obviously. yeah, it's he like still he drove didn't them deal there the with death the, blow. Yeah, right, but the purpose of murdering them. Yeah, okay. yeah, the intent was still there. And yes. he, he got them ninety percent of the way. They just took it over the finish line. Yeah, okay. but like th- this scene, like what makes it so heartbreaking is the Dracula kid becomes aware of what's happening. Yes, yeah, and that's what makes it so brutal is that you think that these kids kind of aren't aware of what's happening around them, and he starts panicking, being like, "Wrong way, uh, I want to go home," and like. The fact that he can't verbalize what he's feeling beyond that is yeah. just, it's hard to watch, man. It's brutal. This movie's dark <laughs> as fuck. Uh, and the actors who played those kids were actually uh, developmentally challenged. That makes kids. it worse. Oh, right? well, oh my they, they, God. It was, but they, well, but, <laughs> but why? Maybe They're all in masks. Yeah. Well, because, uh, I don't know specifically why they were used, but they had the greatest time. All right, bet. Well, okay, well, then it was just an opportunity. Yeah, you know, right. it's like, well, we may as well give. These kids an right. opportunity if it's fun that they for may them, not yeah, have to dress otherwise up. had. Yeah. Speaking of dressing up, the costumes of the kids from back in the day. Terrifying. <laughs> back I head with it. big teeth? Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. That's that those these are the costumes we need to bring back for horror movies. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I love that everything's not like a licensed character. It's yeah. just like a generic this is let's put some strings of hair and weird teeth on this and it's scary, you know? Yeah. Like I love yeah. it's that. It's a bag that you like had laying around the house like <laughs> mm-hmm. flower Even the Dracula sack. mask is scary. The way it's like yeah. painted and stuff, yeah. 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 Um, so the, the modern kids, uh, there's like an elevator. They have to ride down to the bottom of the quarry. Right. They, Cause they're going to leave an offering for those that died, the jack right. lanterns, but, but, there's, but it can only carry three at a time yeah. safely. And yeah. so by the time that Rhonda gets down there, we hear screams in the distance and uh, the pumpkin thing was fun. That where, was so cool. The pump that each of the kid, three kids that went down are holding a lit pumpkin and there, you hear dialogue in the distance, like I don't know what's going on. What is that? And they start freaking out a little bit. And it's all foggy, so you just foggy, see the pumpkins. So you're right. All you can see is the pumpkins, and one by one they extinguish mm. as the children scream and everything. And it's good. It's, it's fun. really good. So we're like, oh no, something's happening. And then these dead kids come grabbing for Rhonda and yep. chasing her back to the uh, elevator, mm-hmm. and she has a panic attack. And then one of the kids actually feels sorry for her because she, well, she falls into a pool and hits her right. head on a rock. Oh, yeah. and they're like, oh, fuck, we've gone too far. But it turns out it is the other three kids dressed up as dead, ki- the yes. dead kids. I like that that's what made them think it had gone too far. This is such an elaborate prank. Yeah. Like, these kids are fucking assholes. Yes. Like, maybe the takeaway from this movie is everyone's an asshole. Everyone in the movie yeah. is an asshole. Everyone's a fucking asshole. But, but these kids might be the biggest with, assholes. Like, like relating yeah, she to is these people. The, they all the suck. Macy yeah. is the ring leader she is like yeah no remorse full bitch yeah, yeah. she and got like, the face for it too like they're bullying a men a developmentally challenged person by luring them out of the house taking them all the way here they had to get costumes they had to get pumpkin like the amount of effort they put into this oh my god focus on literally anything else like or, put this energy into literally yeah. anything else. or you need to be scaring more people yeah not just one person yeah. just her they have it in for her and then they gave her a traumatic brain injury. Like that's how bad they bullied her. Brain, like yeah, you know, experience. yeah. Like, but what happens here is like I wasn't entirely sure if Rhonda had something to do with it. And I, again, I'm only saying this because she was dressed up as a witch. So I'm like, uh, and she has this like. Well, I think the the one kid is like, so you like Halloween? And she's like, you mean Samhain? Yes. And then and she then goes, she goes the-, the whole history of Halloween. It's like anybody who knows that much about all this is like, okay, you're you're hardcore. You're well, into- and she is uh, probably autistic 
And oh, so she just made so no, no. They say right. some. They call her an idiot savant. They say they do. that. They in call the her other words yeah. as well. Yeah. But. Mm-hmm. So, but she seems to have an awareness of Halloween that mm-hmm. the other kids obviously do not. Yeah, or maybe so we're going to this rule thing again or something, and what how these kids violated the rules. I'm not sure, but well, in sh- she kicked the pumpkin. Into oh, that's the true. The last the lit pumpkin. The lit, mm-hmm. lit pumpkin was kicked in, and so somehow it's that like has triggered the right? that well that your protection gone. Yep. And so the ghost kids do show up and Rhonda is given the opportunity to save them cuz she gets in the elevator surrounded by pumpkins protected yep. and uh she chooses to let them all die cuz they fucking played a prank on her so she's going up to the the surface and they all get eaten by the cannibal ghost kids yep or we hear the screams we assume we do. and when she gets to the top <laughs> Sam is there and they just kind of acknowledge each other, other yeah. and then go their separate ways like mm-hmm. he's like okay I like that. You're good. And the final story involves Brian Cox, mm-hmm. John Carpenter himself. Yep. <laughs> as Mr. Krieg. And so he's, so this one I thought was like, okay, is this going to be like, this is the Ebenezer Scrooge story, right? Mm-hmm. The guy who hates uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I think he enjoys tormenting the trick-or-treaters who come to his house yes. by dressing up his little dog, Spite. And it's Spite. Uh, with glowing eyes and all that shit, scaring the crap out of these kids. Which is what you should it's do. It's cute. I love it. Yeah. yeah. If you have the dog, it'll let you do that. Yeah. Yeah. So did Sam even come to his door? Yes. Sam came. Uh, I, Sam actually, came to Dylan Baker's door. Yeah. yeah. And I don't remember if he came here, but all of a sudden, it seems like, uh, um, after you know sitting back, because I think he takes the candy that the kids have left. Right? Yes, and he's eating it. And that's what he gets. He the scares them and then one yeah, and then takes and spits their it out. Um, and then there's a knock on the door. I think the dog starts barking, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, weird shit starts happening. Mm-hmm. The, the front yard is full of pumpkins because he hates uh, Halloween. There's jack o' lanterns all over the place. Um, yeah, it then, reminds him of that time he was an accessory to murder of children. <laughs> but we don't know that yet because he's burning photographs in the fireplace. Yeah, I love how he waited how many years? How many years has it been since this happened? Yeah. And he's like, well, been holding on to these photos for so these photos that would probably be what evidence that I did this. Probably. Like, yeah, let me let me burn them now after I'm a withered, bitter old man. Like, <laughs> he and just I, found them. Yeah. Well, he does have like asthma or something. He, he wheezes. He wheezes a lot. Um, but the. This segment is basically uh, like it's not even really a cat and mouse. It's a battle inside a house between the old guy with a shotgun and the little demon trick or treater, Sam. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who this is the one where Sam actually has the most screen time mm-hmm. uh, because he's leaving. I think, you know, Brian Cox has to creep upstairs because he hears a sound and then the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern's light and there's bloody writing all over the walls and ceilings. Sam's crawling on on walls everywhere yeah mm-hmm. and he gets a shotgun because he's an nra member he's told uh, dylan he did. Uh, baker we and see so, the other half of that conversation with dylan baker in this sequence as well yep but we're back in and there. then he blasts uh, uh he blasts a little bit well the little guy he gets him, him first huh? he unmasks him first and well, the little guy gets him in the, in the Achilles tendon oh yeah, too, yeah, right? yeah. cemetery yeah. style yep with, the, the, okay, with but a razor blade chocolate bar the going with that halloween up. iconography the close-up of him pulling the skin apart where you could see, like, the wound. I don't like when you can see skin open like that. Like, <laughs> like a mouth. I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Oh. Evil Dead 2013 had a thing like yeah. that, too, that I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I just yeah, can't. Yeah. You can feel it. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's how horror actually mm-hmm. when it works. because you're seeing the insides. Yeah. You're not supposed to see those. <laughs> yes. And how easily it comes apart is so, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. And just that sound. That well, Sam also there. leaves, like, a bunch of candy all over the stairs. He home alone's the shit out of this he house. Does. Yeah. He yeah. basically does. Because he stole the candy, I think that's his mm-hmm. biggest sin. Right, aside from it's his biggest sin aside from murdering eight. Mm-hmm. Children. Yeah, but we don't. We still don't. We know still that don't know that at yeah. this point. That he is just a surprise. Well, I feel like you know that when you see him burning the pictures, because they do a close up on a well, picture of him with not, all the kids. Not until the you don't see that until mm. the end. No, that's but when it's revealed that oh my god, he mm, was. The, there's a shot of the photos in the box where you can see what they are. But, but when it yeah, his uh, a character trait of this is he wheezes, but. At the end of the story where the children die, the bus driver does get out of the water. You see his ring and you hear him wheezing mm-hmm. and yep. you get that is um, put at the forefront when we come back to his story at the end. So they're like, 
it's there. We're not going to give you the full reveal, mm-hmm. but he's wheezing as well. He's got his ring on and everything. Yeah. So if you you can put it together that oh he's the bus driver. Okay, I didn't until it was uh, revealed. Yeah, because there was slow. a well, there's, there's that shot where like they pan over the box of photos while he's grabbing it and taking it to the fire. Where yeah. it's like you do see you the one can where they're see, all standing yeah, there. they're all like, standing the in front of the bus, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he does get a shotgun. He blasts uh, Sam in the. Oh no, he unmasks him first. You're yes, right. And he what is. is underneath that big bulbous sack? Pumpkin ghoul. Yeah. Like he's it's a like, small child pumpkin ghoul. He's like, like pumpkin head, but a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like with well, an actual pumpkin actual head. Actual pumpkin head with what looked like carved out kind of eyes and a, mm-hmm. and a big mouth. He, yeah. yeah. Very it's angular. Look. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a look, but now we know why he's so bulbous. I know that we skipped over, but the music in this is by some guy named Douglas Pike. Piles? Pipes? Pipes. Was it pipes? But it sounds <laughs> suspiciously like a Danny Elfman score. Yeah, it does. It la, sounds la, la, good. La, 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 you know. Yep, and there's, mm-hmm. there's kids. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, so that's a lot through this uh, uh, segment. Um, there's a ode to Evil Dead because uh, he, he does blast the pumpkin head and pumpkin guts come out of it. And it's like, okay, he's dead. And then he shoots him a couple more times enough to sever his hand. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the hand comes alive and starts running around the house, attacking him. Yep, and, we got a nice uh, thing reference. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you got to be fucking kidding. Or mm-hmm. Except he says me. <laughs> you got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, which is pretty funny. I love the um, the simple tricks, the simple camera tricks they do with the hand. Mm-hmm. Aside from parts where you know it's like CGI because it's actually crawling across the floor. Other parts, they just keep the hand at the edge of the screen. Yeah. And this this yeah. simple Classic. lo-fi way of just yeah. doing like severed hands over here and it's yeah. walking away and everything. Yeah. I love the pumpkin guts are his flesh. Like it's the stringy, gooey, yeah. like when you carve out a pumpkin, that fresh stuff that you scoop Ugh. out. It's and like it that's his innards. Yeah, the yeah. hand reattaches itself mm-hmm. with those, you know, like yeah. pumpkin strings. There's on. some seeds in there too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, he's a legitimate, uh, some kind of, some Halloween demon, mm-hmm. I suppose, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where we're going with, um, mm-hmm. uh, the spirit of, he is this, the, the spirit of Halloween. He is yep. spirit he Halloween. He knows when you yeah. get naughty and he, he is spirit Halloween. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that movie's coming out this year. Oh, oh yeah. Check that out. Jesus. Um, Why is it not out now? I know. Shouldn't it be out like right now? Yeah. Maybe they're waiting for Halloween. Shouldn't it have been ends. out two weeks ago? Like. <laughs> yeah. To lead into the season. Yeah. Jesus. What the hell? Yeah. I wonder why your movie's going to fail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there's a final attack after he's unmasked where we get the, uh, the sucker knife comes back again. Oh, this part. Okay. Cause it's a whole sucker uh-huh. that he bites with his pumpkin mouth. <laughs> and when you see. <laughs> That's this really, this really oh, disturbed wow. Michaela. Yeah. She did because not like this. He doesn't have teeth. He opens his mouth and it's like yeah, when uh, the inside of a carved pumpkin, it's all mushy <laughs> and soft. And yeah, it makes this crunch when he bites down on this thing and he takes it i do i oh god it i had not noticed how appalling that was before well this he's trying mushy pumpkin mouth but he tries to stab brian cox with it and we're like oh man this is the end but brian cox is saved by candy by i think the arsenic candy bar yep. mm-hmm. um which is he was holding next to his chest or something and it got then, knocked it was on his tray next to his chair which is where he set it and it got knocked over and a bunch of stuff landed on him so is this, are we supposed to say this is the treat, right? So like somehow Sam was was going to kill him because he's violated all these Halloween rules, but he stabbed the, the, the candy bar instead, and then Sam eats the candy bar and then lets him go. Yeah. Is it because there's arsenic in the candy? I don't know. This is, my, yeah, I've never understood this Sam part. Sam should know who, you know, he knows everything. Right, he should, he know, should know, but maybe he thinks because he was perfectly fine with Dylan Baker. He didn't touch him. He went trick-or-treating in his house. So mm-hmm. I think he likes the evil. Maybe he sensed the evil in the arsenic candy and is like, all right, you're all right. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've seen this a couple times. I'm not entirely sure because then there's several shots of, uh, like, Sam out in the yard. You know, when other trick-or-treaters come to the door... And we do have that kind of Ebenezer Scrooge thing. He's got the Jacob Marley mm-hmm. like uh, does, wrap sure around his, his head. And the, one of the kids said, a great mummy costume, Mr. Krieg. Yeah, oh yeah, he's bandaged himself up after the attack. Yeah. And he's it seemingly had a change of heart. Because he's giving candy to the kids, the trick-or-treaters who come. And Sam's out there watching approvingly. And there's kind of a, a look of understanding between them. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay. And then Sam notices across the street, though, uh, the couple from the beginning are arriving home, so this is where the movie actually began, and so she blows out that pumpkin, 
and he's going to go over right. And, and, and Sam he looks, saw it because he was right across the yep, street. Yeah. Right. And Sam looks at his sucker and he's like, "I didn't get to use this." <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm going over there. He's a sucker knife. Uh. Mm-hmm. So, but then, then there is like a little coda, and that is there is another knock on Mister Krieg's door, and who's there? The bus kids come to exact their final revenge. For some reason, out of the blue on this Halloween night like many this. years later, and they say trick or treat. I feel like the happy movie Halloween. should have ended before this scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, well, is, this doesn't add anything, I don't feel like. The movie constantly does this thing where it seems like, you know, it's like, okay, well, this character is absolved in some way. Yeah. Right. By some act that they did or whatever. And then it kills them anyway. You know, it's like it just keeps on, you know, doing that. And so you're you're jerked around a lot. You know, yes. it just continually jerks you around your allegiances of like, yes. OK, who's my protagonist in this? in this scene right. everyone's an asshole who do i like everyone's an do asshole like sam? <laughs> and that's why sam still exists and he's so ubiquitous yeah he's now, the least everyone asshole. is just like yeah. yeah i like sam yeah he, he killed all the assholes and uh mm-hmm. he did not kill but he people. didn't though because he didn't kill brian cox like that's the thing like but if he, he was gonna kill all the assholes true. he would have killed him like but maybe i mean maybe sam sensed it unless he it knew was these kids were coming back yeah. i think he, knew they he was like coming. oh this is theirs they've claimed this guy this is our kill yeah like, and he was at the reservoir so he could have told the kids this is where the guy is you got to get your revenge true a lot of revenge a lot of revenge mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um okay well i guess uh there it is what i'm curious to hear is what you guys think about the movie trick or treat is you're, that what you're just doing no you're gonna tell okay. me what you actually yeah. think about it this is gonna be fascinating stuff well it we're gonna find out you're gonna we'll stick see. with us but first we're gonna answer some of your mail and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I forgot about Tiny Hand until I listened to the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, there was a lot of talk about Tiny Hands on last week's right? episode. I think if you go to our Instagram story and our saved stories for that episode, you will see a picture of the Tiny Hand with the Blu-ray covers yeah. for yeah. reference. That yeah, was, yeah. You, know, you might need the we reference because yeah. we were talking yeah. a lot of Tiny yeah. Hand. <laughs> that was a guest star in that episode. That's yeah, it really hand. was. Yeah. But, I mean, I got our money's worth. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Well, we should remind people at home how they can get a hold of us in this interactive portion of the Saturday Night Freak Show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Sorry, I would have jumped in there. I, was I, was gonna gonna I knew it. I totally spaced. I was like, yep. I was like, oh, is this my moment? My job's done. I was like, oh, I'm out of here. Time to punch out. Yep. Uh, or Instagram at Saturday Night yeah, Freak Show. Say, that's your- um, Okay, so uh, Jeff Miller writes in. Hi, Jeff. And Jeff says, hey, ladies and germs, big fan of the show. I just started listening a couple weeks ago, and I'm catching up on the most uh, most of the past reviews. I got a lot of work to do. I've <laughs> loved horror films since grade school, and Sean actually introduced me to my first Friday the 13th movie, Jason 6, of course. I'm doing the like, Lord's oh, work. that's good. Okay, I, I'm, yeah, right. no, okay. I was like, which one? Which one was the first one? I was sweating it, it for a minute. It was the first... Uh, one of the first horror movies I ever discovered in my dad's collection, a VHS okay, okay. of Jason Lives, and we were fascinated by it before we ever saw it. I, because I of thought that, cover that might on have it. been part five at first. No, I was like, oh, no. God. Oh, no, no, I started no. out with like good with the good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. God. I, I, I think it was, six was the first one I think I saw. Listen to yeah, our episode yeah. on part six. Uh-huh. That's right. Mm-hmm. We do discuss that. Now. Um, But Jeff says, uh, anyway, I'm not sure what the rules are when fans can or if fans can suggest movies to review, but I thought I'd throw a few out. Class of 1984, Mm -hmm. Terrifier, Graveyard Shift and Monster Man. The last two were a bit cheesy comedy horror, but would enjoy hearing what you all thought about any of the films and keep up the good work. Thank you, Jeff. Stay tuned for Listener Request Month in oh, January. Yeah. Right, we're, coming, we're coming up on this. It's going to come up know, so much sooner than we realize, guys. These officially. Very soon. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, tonight's I'm movie scared. was <laughs> Trick or Treat. Asobi Datura says it's a legit great horror anthology film that manages to have a strong through line connecting the stories. My favorite segment is the Halloween school bus massacre, the one with the kids in the quarry. A film that deserves to be well known outside of horror circles. I look forward to hearing which segment is the favorite 
of each host. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Asobi. Thanks for writing in. Thank you. I think we know what Michaela's is. Uh, <laughs> Adam Kaler says, excellent choice. It's a solid horror movie that takes full advantage of the fun of Halloween. All the small details in the background and connecting story works and shows that the creators poured a lot of love into the movie. Uh, how does the newspaper read in that town on November 1st? Time to move to a new city? <laughs> That's a good question. Do, yeah, do they just accept that there's mass death on like Halloween in their town? They're like, it's the cost of having the party, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when you hear about like big, crazy, like, uh, like motorcycle rallies or whatever that happened. And it's like, yeah, there was like 30 deaths, but that happens every year when we do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, is it like that? Yeah. You know, like Maybe. Dude, the running of the bulls. It's, it's like, yeah, 10 people die. Party. They have yeah. an expectancy. Like yeah. eh, 30 people died last year. Yeah. So we're going about that. Yeah. As long uh, as we stay under that, we're good. You yeah, know, right. like, for average. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, well, we can't throw off the curve. Right. Travis Legler says, now here is a modern day Halloween time classic. I remember seeing this for the first time and feeling like, yeah, I'll be watching this again. I remember enjoying Anna Paquin in this movie, and it's a good pick for the freak show. Thanks. Yeah. I was shocked when you picked it that it hadn't been done already. Right. I assumed it had. Yeah. I think. Too obvious. It, it kind of felt like it would like be like bringing Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. But I figured like. It's it's your fault, Colin. Right? I know. You do one trick or treat. It really is the main reason I brought it. And I was just like, we haven't brought it, have we? Hmm. Well, there you go. And it is that time of year. Mm -hmm. Michael Whitaker says, does anyone remember how this movie for a couple of years was run for 24 hours on Halloween on the long defunct Chiller channel? I do. I do remember that. Chiller was like a product of NBC, right? Mm -hmm. Or Universal. So. And it, uh, yeah. Shudder eventually became. Yeah, there were all those like we were going to do. Yeah. There was the horror channel, yep. which had like the backing of, I think, like a lot of the Wes Craven and they got John Carpenter. Everybody to sign off on it. Yeah. All that stuff's on Tubi really... now. Tubi is, <laughs> has channels all day long for horror. Monsters HD. Anybody mm -hmm. remember Monsters no, HD? No, I and don't. They, they, they ended up. Like there's Blu-rays, like those Amicus Blu-rays, mm. Beast Must Die and stuff like that, are, yeah. have Monsters HD logos on them. But it was like I think a satellite channel or something when HD was still like a, <laughs> right when it was such a big thing they added HD yeah. to everything just so you know because I don't think everybody had all the TV channels hadn't switched over yet. Right. But if you were an early adopter, you got these channels. Mm -hmm. and Monsters HD was one of them. Jesus, remember those days? And they had all the HD masters of all the uh, horror movies. Um. Last week, we watched a movie called Trick or Treat. <laughs> we did. Uh, Hollywood Clergy says of that one, I did a double feature of James Wong and Glenn Morgan's Final Destination 3. Uh, <laughs> so we're saying uh, Glenn Morgan was right. in uh, Trick or Treat, right? And then became really? the director. Right. Um, but he said uh, uh, that was the one where the DVD had an alternate kill for every scene, yep. including no one gets off the coaster. Mm -hmm. he said, so he did a uh, double feature of Final Destination 3 and Trick or Treat. And he says they sure do like boobs in their horror movies. Is the spiritual successor to Trick or Treat the movie Brain Scan, or is it Deathgasm? I think Colin says Deathgasm. I've never we seen Brain Scan. Week. Brain yeah. Scan is the CD-ROM version. Okay. The thing comes out. The guy comes out of the trickster. Gotcha. Comes out of the CD-ROM and torments Edward Furlong. But I think Deathgasm is the spiritual. I appreciate the final D three. <laughs> I think we're overdue for another final D movie on the podcast. We'll see. Uh, Steve Carney says yes. Trick or treat rules. The movie was filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Like I know what you did last summer, so it has mm. a special meaning to me because I'm from that state. And like Colin said on the Berserker episode, hopefully an official Blu-ray release is right around the corner. It's upsetting that it hasn't been released yet. Vinegar Syndrome, step your game up. No one yeah. more upset than Colin. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Well, you listen to our episode and you get the whole tortured <laughs> history of the rights of uh, Trick or Treat. Uh, Dom Cree I says, up, Dom? I love this damn film. I still think the Italian title is a little more awesome. That was, was Death it? at 33 RPM. Oh, I love that. That's better. That's better. And so is the Enzo Schiatti poster art. I think Ooh. the only thing that this movie needs is more of a metal feel. The band and the singer feels more hair metal-y slash Motley Crue-ish, but maybe that's just me. Uh, surely with all this TV film nostalgia, cult revival via streaming platforms, this is long overdue. A killer sequel. If not, Colin and I will have to make it happen. And true confession. Uh, <laughs> Dom and I have been talking for years on Twitter. Trying to dream up. <laughs> write the script. The write it. You guys write it together. <laughs> um, wow. The week before, we watched a movie called Berserker, and Richard Kratzer says of um, Pappy Nyquist. Oh, yeah. All right. 
uh, uh, George Buck. George Buck Flower. Thank you for his roles in Wishmaster and Pumpkinhead were also a lot of fun. We didn't yeah. mention those because I think we were kind of making fun of the fact that both he and John Goff were in a bunch of John Carpenter mm -hmm. uh, and, and the witch who came in from the sea. Right. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says as a parent of kids who were into making slime. Oh, because. Uh, yes, the slime talk. The slime talk. Yes, yeah, so there was a lot of Nickelodeon slime talk. Because yeah. Sean sense... got slimed certified slime. Uh, and I sent the. the we, yeah. we, I've seen the certificate. It's legit, guys. Like he sent it to verify it. Nickelodeon so. himself signed it. That's <laughs> yeah. all I can yeah. say. Nick O'Lodian, yep, right? Yeah. 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 Well, Michael Whitaker says... Brother I can, to Jack O'Lantern. Yes. He says, I can confirm that the ingredients for most of them contain some amount of white glue and borax. Uh, if anyone remembers Nickelodeon's product called GAC, yep. that was pretty much what that was all made out of. Oh, I yep, had we had GAC, that conversation, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I, think I says, had Gak and Floam. I was the rich Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. You had Gak Floam, and what? too. Floam. Oh, yeah. okay. I was wanting to... Didn't Floam look like something you could take a bite out of, right? It did. It was, like, but it was all like bubbly. It was the it. forbidden it snack. It you know? like, like it's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this I'm is Michaela. Sorry. This is Michaela as I'm going to say 20. <laughs> it's it's my version of Tide Pods, right? Cuz like <laughs> we all ate some yeah, shit we yeah. weren't supposed to. No, I never, is the point of all I this. never did, but I just knew cuz it looked like dipping dots almost, right? Kinda, like it had yeah. that texture. Like, I was like um, I want to know what it feels like. The Nestle yeah. Crunch. Yes. Thing. Uh, yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. The bunch of crunch, yeah. And it would snap and pop when yeah. you messed with it. It was fun. Yeah. Well, Michael also says uh, does, does no one else remember that green slime was a product of the show you can't do that on television yes i remember it clearly yeah okay if you said i don't know you got slimed mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes they try and do it on purpose and they don't get water mm -hmm. and they always tried to make sure whoever was getting slimed you could usually spot it because they were usually wearing a white shirt or white pants right and the there was white were not yeah as close to them as yep. mm -hmm. uh, the staging was very show. obvious uh, yeah oh Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you all, good people, for yes. writing in and uh, keeping us entertained. We hope we're entertaining you. We're going to do that right now by telling you what we thought of tonight's movie, Trick or Treat, starting with Colin. Oh, boy. <laughs> what did you think about tonight's movie, Trick or Treat? I want to give one more thing. Michael Doherty, since we mentioned it before, wrote Urban Legends, Bloody Mary. Oh, Because we had a conversation wow. about that. I think with John Goff or somebody yeah, someone last week. Berserker episode? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to put that out there. Yep. So there you go. He's got, wow. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Brian Singer did produce this movie. That's also. He did. Like, uh, so he got the money together so Michael Doherty could do it. Mm -hmm. And then Krampus, you know, then he had to go after <laughs> uh, Christmas. That was the other reason I waited to bring this because I think Krampus. I think we We've all, done Krampus. We did on Krampus this, on yeah, this show, which go. is another Michael Doherty yeah. film. Um, I think we all recommended at the time. I, my I was taste not of, on that episode. Uh, was well, my my taste have soured on that movie over the years, and we've discussed it off mic. Now there's like a new. It gets brought up every year off mic about how disappointed we are. Yeah. In that movie. yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it has a lot of good ideas. A lot of good yeah. ideas. Execution is not there. Mm -hmm. to the, our review. Right. The ghosts in the yard is the same as the snowmen. They redo that yeah. trick yep. in that. Yeah. yeah. Redo it in a less effective way. Krampus probably would have been more effective as an anthology. Yes. Why wasn't it? Because it feels anthology -like. Krampus going to all these different houses. It's built yeah. in for you. Like, yeah. How, like they, how do you yeah. whiff that, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I still enjoy Krampus. I just haven't gone back to it. I think since we did the episode and haven't checked out the longer cut. Uh, oh, yeah. and see how so it's been many it. years since you watched many years. it. Uh, trick or treat. Uh, it seems like I revisit uh, either intentionally or not every couple of years. Um, so now it feels like I've seen it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I mean, it's the most Halloween Halloween movie. You know, it's like you think John Carpenter's Halloween is the Halloween movie. But the, the one that's actually, it's not really about the holiday, you know? Yeah. The holiday is the setting, it but this one, it's like... It doesn't look like fall at all in that movie, right. yeah. yeah. There's palm trees in that movie, Very green. yeah. Like, this is the, like, okay, this is Halloween on steroids. This is the <laughs> Halloween yes. that you wished you had in your town or your neighborhood. Maybe some of you do, and, <laughs> you know, you mm -hmm. lucky people. Um, but that is... The, really the biggest selling point of it i think i mean i said that earlier but as i was going i'm like um it's a movie where um it's not scary at all no. at all it's a horror movie with no, no scares no suspense no jumps 
Uh, uh, it, the the sheets flying out of the thing at Leslie Bibb scared he me because I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay. I forgot it was coming, and it's like, Whoa. well, well then. The way right. she pulls the sheets off is meant to be like tension building. I too. like the way that they did that yeah. because there was one that was like, this is the. I mean, they they did the full court press on this is how you cut it for the thing actually getting her, and yeah. nothing was there. I'm like, okay, I respect that. So <laughs> you know, I I respect you know it, the way it was made and all that. I just think that the stories aren't. Like none of them. I mean, none of them are really. Good. They're not a plus stories. None of them. But, you know, uh, as far as like, do you have a favorite one? It's like I think I like the werewolf one because the cool werewolf shit at the end. Like, so that one scene kind of colors the rest of it. And I do like the dialogue. When yeah, you it go is back well written. And listen to it. it. It's like they are. You know, mom always said she was the runt of the litter. There's all these hints. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm that that maybe you don't pick up on the first time and then i guess i like the last one um because uh you know it's it's more the style of it and yeah. little demon sam and all that other stuff it does but, go on too long yeah yeah but yes that's, that that you could also be leveled against uh, krampus i think is yeah. a lot of so i mean i would recommend the movie obviously as like a halloween fun thing to watch i just don't think that there's like a whole lot there beyond that but i think it's still a um like a halloween seasonal classic you know did anybody get killed on camera in this movie now leslie bibb is the closest one you see her like gory kind of you know but even that's funny because she's got the sucker shoved in her mouth which is weird because this is an r-rated movie it's weird yeah boobs but i was yeah yeah, there is like one. That was the only well, thing. Well, there's really, decapitated heads and shit too. There like, is, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I guess kid the murder. Tone of it lots in of some kid, places. <laughs> lots Child of murder, kid murder. A kid's head. On yeah. A spinny so it's thing. more. It's more like it's subject matter than its tone. Its tone feels like a PG-13 movie. It does, yeah. and it's it's almost like the the deaths and everything feel like decorations as well, because they don't seem entirely real. They're not going for reality in these deaths. I don't believe. No. No. Because this like, movie's supposed to be fun. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so there you go. I guess that's what it is. It's a fun Halloween centric uh, movie and it's an entertaining way to pass the time uh, around Halloween. I mean, I don't know if you need to watch it every year. I don't think it holds up, but I think at least once in your life, you should see Trick or Treat on Halloween. Michaela, what do you think? I mean, I love this movie. I'm really sad that it was like a shelved project and didn't get its due because I feel like if this were to come out right now, it would be like the biggest horror movie of the year, right? Like, I think it might overtake Halloween Ends talk. Do you remember Hellfest? Uh, I I do. Hellfest Hellfest also had like really no, I mean, I guess that's the thing. It's like, is there a lot of stars in this movie? Who's your big, because Anna Paquin. Anna Paquin, yeah. Was... Uh, coming Rome. off X Men, yeah. This is and Dylan yeah. Baker's not like he's recognized. Brian Cox has been in right. stuff, yeah. yeah. So Leslie Bibb had been in stuff at this point, yeah. But it still does feel like a theatrical feature. It does. Yes. I, I mean, I love Anna Paquin. She's one of my favorites, and I, I, I know Brian Singer should be canceled, and I shouldn't enjoy. But I like his movies. I'm sorry. I <sighs> he's made some good movies. He's he made has. some bad movies too. But he's also made some good movies. Um and. I yeah I hate that he is who he is but I will, I do like some of his movies and uh, Sean you point out when we're watching this it seemed like his producer credit <laughs> was a second on the screen it, it, it feels like quick. they edited it down it felt yeah. faster <laughs> than the yeah. other credits or anybody yeah. knew anything. right well yeah. they knew that the apt pupil scandal was out there but kind of got yeah, uh, yeah yeah it wasn't as public as it is now right, yeah it, we didn't have the internet <laughs> yes um I I I mean. If you're if you're new to this podcast or don't know the history or whatever, I'm a big werewolf movie person. So <laughs> seeing a werewolf story in an unexpected environment and it's like hot girls that are like friends being werewolves, like you never see that. It's always like being a werewolf is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Whereas like it is their power in this movie. And I love that. I love the different take on the werewolf narrative. And I want to see more of it. I want the full movie. I want the TV series. Give me whatever you got. <laughs> I can see Michaela yeah. watching this with with like Toby or something. Yeah. And she'd be like, surprise werewolves. Yeah, surprise werewolves. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the first time I watched this with my husband, he had never seen it, so I just really had to sit at my hands the whole movie. <laughs> and like, but he was he was more floored by it in the end sequence when Brian Cox reaches for those photos. He just he legit whispered, he goes, Oh, he's the bus driver. <laughs> and like the way it hit him like a ton of bricks in that moment was like it was satisfying to get someone to piece it together for the first time. He was not as blown away by the werewolf stuff as I was mm. because he just doesn't care as much. But 
yeah no i love it i love the atmosphere i think it's well made it's well crafted there's a passion here there's a there's a love for horror and halloween and like the ritual of it all and i and it's like it's a, an original story an original property even if it does reference these other horror tropes that we love there's so much good to be had here even though it is so fucking dark if you think about <laughs> it at all um that's why it's it's like a we say it's a fun movie yeah with just, a dark core. Yeah, just turn it off. Turn it off in your brain as soon as you're done watching it. Don't dwell on it because then you're gonna be like, "Wow, this is really fucked up." <laughs> um, but definitely gotta recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. Like, go in knowing as little as you possibly can because I think the reveals are fun. But I would definitely recommend it. Sean, what do you think? Trick or treat. Um, I mean, I, you guys are saying some mm-hmm. great things. Um, I the I, the reason I love, um. It it really is like it is the atmosphere of the movie. It's the atmosphere. It's the production design. It's also the story. I like I I know we don't live in this world, but I like to believe in living in a world where there is this sort of magic to Halloween. I I I want to believe in that stuff. Mm -hmm. I love the idea that yeah, if you do blow out the candle on the thing, bad things are going to happen because the barrier is thin at that time. Just phrases like that and everything. Just. It it gets me going. I I love that, and I wish I wish some of this stuff was real. You know, yeah. it'd just be interesting. Um, it's it is a beautiful movie to look at, and I think Colin, you're right. Um, as as far as what we've talked about the stories, but it is like you want to feel Halloween. This is the feeling of Halloween, or it's the Halloween we all want, and it's got that magic to it that I love. We talked about the some of the stories are you know some are not as good as the other ones i think some of it goes on a little bit too long but it's a fun movie i like having fun with this movie um i like sam i, I like the anthology portion of it I like how it all wraps around um i mean hot girl werewolves are great mm-hmm. i'll never say no to that um that's yeah. the title of my movie hot girl <laughs> hot werewolves, <laughs> yeah. werewolf in a girl's dormitory yeah. is a movie Oh, All damn. right. Well, I okay. gotta check it out. Now. I was gonna say, any good? <laughs> no. <laughs> then stop taking the good titles. Um, but yeah, I think uh, if you haven't seen Trick or Treat, I think you should definitely see it. Um, but it is like I haven't seen it in a few years, so it's not a every year viewing for me because again, I think I would get tired of it and I don't want to do that. Um, so, but I like I like what it gives me uh, the magic, the Halloween magic it gives me when I put it in every couple of years. So uh, I definitely think you should watch it, Trick or Treat recommend it all right that's a freak show approved means you have to watch trick or treat yep um all right so next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by holly but holly's not here so we're gonna go over to michaela michaela what is holly chosen to watch next week uh she has told me to say that we're watching the hole from 2001 all right the the whole. Whole. this is a movie i've never seen this but allegedly uh, i've never seen this <laughs> uh, allegedly <laughs> has thora birch and uh joey quinn from dexter and uh kira knightley and some other people kira knightley? looks like a very british movie a lot of a lot of british names based you know, right. based on this <laughs> the IMDb. hole not whole or the anything hole. like that because 2001 right the not hole. the joe dante 2009 no hole. definitely not no. that one. okay no. i right. agree it's definitely not that one <laughs> definitely not this is very teen teen movie joe dante the whole. Directed this by Nick Ham. Okay. All right. So there you go. You have your assignments. Until next week, we'll reconvene. And until then, the basement is going dark.